Hey everybody, Tina here with our Blessed and Beautiful Life. Um, I just wanted to chat with you guys this morning about something that is kind of troubling to me. So it's about being an advocate for your children. This is not always easy to do. Most of the time, it's not easy to do, especially in this world that we are living in now, this culture, this society, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's a lot easier to kinda just go with the flow um, and not really stand against the grain. But recently, um, I've had a situation with Parker, my son, um, who is seven years old, and you guys have probably seen him on my videos, and I took my children to the dentist for their regular six month checkup, cleaning, you know, maybe needed some x-rays, um, things like that. Well, my son ended up having five cavities. Now, my children have never had dental problems um, other than, you know, Lexi might have had a cavity here or there. I think she's had three in her whole life and she's almost 18. Um, and then just got those filled and that was that. But Parker, developed five cavities at some point. It was like one checkup, he was good, and then like six months or a year later, whenever that next checkup was, he had developed five cavities. So our family dentist at that time didn't feel comfortable um, doing the work on him because they didn't know if he was gonna be able to sit still in the chair for the numbing shots and the drilling and the filling and all that because prior to that, he had never had any issues. And he was so young, I mean, six, five, four, three. I mean, we're talking, he was like three or four years old when we discovered these cavities that he had. So our doctor referred us out to a pediatric dentist. And um, I took him to the pediatric dentist, of course, for the initial consultation. And they explained to me and Joe that um, he, basically the only treatment or remedy that they recommended was for them to drill the cavities out and put crowns on his teeth, which would include um, sedating him. So, <laughs> you know, in my mind, in my heart, in my gut, I was like, crowns, wow, because to me, crowns are kind of like that step above. Like I, as a child, had a lot of cavities, and when, I mean, half my, most of my mouth is, is full of fillings just from not taking care of my teeth when I was younger, eating lots of candy, soda, things like that. I never had a crown. I was always drilled and filled, and I was good to go. It, it wasn't until in my adult life now that I've had a few cavities, or excuse me, fillings, that have cracked or needed to be re replaced or whatever. Um, so I remember sitting there in that pediatric dentist office thinking, crowns? Oh my gosh, like that's a lot. Are the cavities that bad that they need to be like drilled out so much and caps put on there and him to be sedated? And I mean, this was like my four-year-old son that has never had any significant issues like that. So I definitely didn't like the way that it felt. It didn't feel right in my gut, but I'm not the professional. I'm not the dentist. Um, and because I've never had issues with my children up to that point, I took their advice and their guidance and their word for it and I did not question them. We got the five crowns done and I had a, a close friend that has a son around Parker's age that had the same exact situation happen with the same dentist. He had some cavities. They referred him to the pediatric dentist that we went to. They immediately jumped to putting all these crowns on him versus just filling them. Um, so it was just, it started to not set right with me. I'm like, why are they just jumping to crowns? This just doesn't feel right when there could be a less invasive, a less aggressive, a less costly option that could be sufficient to correct the problem. But what was done was done. You know, he had already gotten the crowns. And fast forward about, I don't know, maybe last year, um, Parker developed another cavity. And so my dentist immediately referred him back to this um, pediatric dentist where he got all the crowns. And I, I felt uneasy about it. I was like, oh my gosh. All I kept thinking is, can't you just fill the cavity here in your office? And of course my dentist was like, well, you know, I don't typically do children under this age because we don't really know how they're gonna react. If they can sit still, it could be dangerous for them if they move or jolt or grab my hand or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, I get it. 
because even still, I didn't know how Parker would react to that because he was sedated the last time that he had to have major work done in his mouth. Um, so I'm like, okay, maybe she's right. I, I don't know how Parker would do. He does well with his x-rays. He does well with his cleanings, which you know sometimes the cleanings can be uncomfortable when they're flossing. He does really well with that. In fact, he loves going to the dentist because he gets to go home with the toy and wear the cool glasses. So, um, but I thought, well, let me just, we've been there before. It's whatever. I'll take him out there. You guys, I had a heavy heart driving him out to this pediatric dentist because I knew in my gut that she was going to immediately say, oh, yep, he needs another crown. And at this point, I'm kind of starting to feel a little pissy because I don't do well with people telling me something and not explaining to me why this needs to be done when there could be another option that would be sufficient that um, wouldn't be as painful for him, wouldn't require him to be sedated again. I just, uh, I don't do well with that. So I, I did kind of go into this appointment, this new appointment with a little bit of a wall up because I told myself if they try to tell me my son needs another crown in his mouth, um, I'm gonna have to push back and I'm gonna have to demand answers and I may even have to get a second opinion. So sure enough, we go into this room, they're examining Parker's new cavity that he has and I immediately hear her start talking to the hygienist about getting us scheduled and set up for another sedation appointment to get another crown and I cut her off and I said, uh, wait a minute, Are, did you say a crown, another crown? Cause he already has five crowns that you put into his little mouth, like another one that's gonna be six. Like, is that really necessary? And I was immediately met with kind of a defensive posture, a little taken back that I even had the audacity to question her. Um, was definitely made to feel like you're just a mom. What are you doing questioning me? I'm a dentist, uh, I have a degree for this. Her whole demeanor, her Okay, sorry about that. Apparently my memory card was full. I had to go clear it out and put it back in. So anyway, I need to get a bigger memory card. So, But back to where I was. So when I confronted the dentist, um, it was very confrontational. It was very awkward. I mean, my, like, my armpit started to sweat a little bit. Like I felt like, you know, you're just, I was just definitely made to feel like, whoa, whoa, little mama. You're, you shush, you let us do what we do and you don't ask questions. So anyway, um, you know, the doctor, the dentist patronized me and says, you know, I understand mom, I understand your concern, um, but if this was my child, I would be recommending the same treatment. You know, she does this and I'm like, well, I don't agree with you. Um, I think you put five crowns in my son's head already that could have been fixed with fillings. Um, and I'm just not okay with him getting yet another crown in his head that's gonna cost me a bunch of money where a filling is covered in my insurance, crowns are not. Um, so I think I'm gonna get a second opinion. And I said, are you telling me that you are going to turn me away today. Are you telling me that if I don't let you put a crown in his head that you will not treat my son or at least evaluate the option of a filling to see if that would be sufficient to correct the issue for him? No, I'm just not comfortable with that. So I was like, okay, Parker, let's go. You know, I took him off the chair. We walked out of the dentist office. You guys, I was heated. I was heated because here's my thing and I want to say this and I probably should have said this in the very beginning of the video. Clearly, I am not a dentist. Um, I don't even have a college degree. So I'm not proclaiming to know what is best for my son's teeth. Uh, that's why I take him to the dentist. But I am his mother. I know my child. And in so many cases, I think that as parents, we know what is best for our children. Um, and even if we are unsure if we know what is best for them or if what the professional is telling us, we have a right and an obligation um, to get a second opinion if we're not sure, to make sure that the right procedure is being done for our kids. I don't care if it's a doctor, I don't care if it's a dentist, I don't care if it's the school counselor, staff members at the school, I don't care who it is because you know what? We are all human and because we're human, we are born flawed. So. I don't care what kind of PhD you hold or what you have hanging on your wall. I have something that you don't have 
a dentist and it's called a mama's intuition and a mama's gut feeling. And you guys, I'm telling you, mine has never, ever been wrong. Ever. With Lexi growing up, everything I've ever been through with my children, anytime I got that little feeling in my tummy, like something just wasn't right, it has never been wrong. And I do truly believe that that is God. He has, he has instilled that ability, that superpower in us mamas for a reason. So when you feel it, don't suppress it. Don't shut it down. Don't discard it. Um, listen to it. If it's nothing more than just getting a second opinion to make sure um, that you're doing the right thing. So we left, I went back to my dentist, our family dentist, and I expressed to her my complete frustration with what we experienced again at the pediatric dentist office and how I was made to feel because I wouldn't let them put another crown in his mouth. And I told her, I said, I know that we don't know if Parker can sit in the chair but at this point he was what six years old when we got when we found the last cavity i'm like he sits great for x-rays he sits great for cleanings he sits great for all these things can we just try it can you just evaluate him and check and see if the tooth could potentially be fixed with just a filling and if so would you do it for him i'm asking you from um one woman to another a concerned mother i do not feel comfortable with him going back to this pediatric dentist. If, if he will sit for you, I would rather you do the work for him because she was our family dentist and I, I really liked her. She took good care of our family and my kids. Um, so she looks at his tooth, checks it out, does her thing and says, you know, it's, it's a rather large cavity, but I think that we can fill it. Um, and, and I said, then fill it, then fill it. You know, I mean, I've done a lot of research on this and I understand that there may be some cases where a crown is necessary, um, even on baby teeth, supposedly. I don't really know if I agree with that, but again, I am not the one that went to school and has the degree in dentistry. Um, but my thing was, if you can't fill it with a filling, then pull it. It's a baby tooth. Why are you going to crown a baby tooth and cost me all this money when this tooth is going to turn around and fall out a year later or whatever? Um, but apparently after doing some research, there are cases where, um, baby teeth do need a crown and so whatever. So I'm not saying that it's never necessary. My biggest complaint was that there was no consideration for any other less invasive procedure. There was just no consideration to it at all. It was immediately sedation. It was immediately a crown, all the stuff that was going to cost us thousands of dollars and cost my son more pain and suffering. So she filled his tooth. Our dentist filled his tooth for him. He took his numbing shot like a big boy. He sat very still. You guys, I was so proud of him. He was so brave. He cried little silent tears out of his little sunglasses and I held his hand, but he stood, he sat still as a statue and he didn't move and she drilled it and she filled it. That was like a year, year and a half ago. And the filling is still holding and it's perfectly fine. So my frustration grew with that. Um, the mommy guilt set in that I didn't do him do justice by checking and getting a second opinion, um, especially now that this tooth that had a pretty significant cavity was doing just fine with a filling. Did I put my son through all these things that maybe he didn't really need to go through? Um, so the reason I'm putting this video out is because yesterday uh, the kids had their six month checkup and Lately, Parker's breath has been stinking and he'll brush his teeth and come in and I'm like, oh, dang, what? I'm like, what? Joe jokes around and asks him if he's been in a cat litter box. <laughs> anyway, that's a, oh, yeah, whatever. You know how dads are. So um, I'm like, man, his breath really stinks. Like it is really, really bad. We go into the dentist appointment yesterday, which is just supposed to be a checkup and a cleaning. And you know, they're checking his gums and stuff. And one of the crowned teeth, um, was infected. So did I mention, oh, I didn't even mention. So last, the appointment before this, we took him in for a checkup and one of the crown teeth had gotten infected. And I'm like, what does that mean? And, and our family doctor said, you know, um, 
we can we we should pull it it is infected it's a baby tooth um, it doesn't make sense to try and you know repair this and fix the crown or anything what had happened was the crown they put these metal crowns on the kids because they're going on baby teeth which they know are going to eventually fall out anyway and again in my mommy opinion I'm not a dentist they're putting the cheapest crowns on them because they're going on to baby teeth you know I have one crown in my mouth and it is not a metal crown um, and I've had it in for years and it's it's never been defective or had any issues with it well these crowns in Parker's mouth are starting are cracking and have gaping holes in them so we didn't know that and so this whole time food and bacteria and everything was getting in there and the tooth got severely infected so at his little checkup appointment where he thought he was just going in for a cleaning they had to numb my son and extract that tooth just mortifying mortifying experience we get through it I'm even, I'm even more ticked off because I feel like this could have been avoided if they hadn't done crowns to begin with, which is um, allowing more issues because the crowns are poor quality and infection is happening underneath the crowns. So I take him into this dentist appointment yesterday yet again for another checkup and lo and behold, one of the lower crowns that he has was also severely infected. And you guys, it was pussing. It had blood and pus. I help him brush his teeth, I never saw that. But I don't push on his gums and like get in there and pick and poke and, poke and prod and check him. When she showed me that and the pus started to come out, my heart just dropped because I knew she was going to have to extract that tooth. Once again, little Parker is sitting in this chair ready for his toy thinking he's just getting a checkup and he has to go through another tooth extraction. He has caught on to this though. He is smartened up and he hears the language that's being spoken above his head and he immediately starts to cry these little silent tears. And I just grabbed his hand and I was like, Parker, I'm so sorry, buddy. I was like, but she is going to have to take that tooth out. If we don't take the tooth out, it can cause more problems for you. And so yesterday they extracted another tooth from my son. The first tooth that they extracted, the adult tooth had started to grow in. It had already broke through the bone. So the dentist wasn't concerned about spacing. The tooth that they extracted yesterday, um, the adult tooth has not even started to grow in yet. These are the side teeth we're talking about, the chompers. Um, so she's concerned about the space now that we've pulled that tooth out and the other teeth growing in and then not leaving room for the new one. So now Parker has to go back in four weeks after this extraction heals and he has to get a metal spacer put in his mouth to kind of hold that space open to allow for that adult tooth to grow in. I came home last night and I couldn't think of anything other than how upset I was at this whole process. What I feel was the wrong decision four years ago to put all those crowns in his head has led to a residual nightmare after effect for Parker. He is having consistent infections, tooth extractions, now having to get a spacer put in his mouth, and he still has three of these dang crowns in his head. So, you guys, I don't know. I just felt it on my heart to tell you if your mamas or daddies out there to listen to your gut and be your children's advocate because I really feel that if I had taken Parker somewhere else four years ago and got a second opinion, I could have found a dentist. I know I could have because my dentist filled the last cavity for him and the cavity is holding and doing fine. I could have found a dentist that would have filled those cavities for him and he would have been fine and not be having to suffer through all of this. Um, so I did do some research last night and I filed a formal complaint against this dentist office. And um, I can't remember the name of the, the agency. It's, um, um, it's our, our state's uh, health professions enforcement division. So they are the ones that basically investigate all of the complaints for um, doctors and dentists and so on. So I filed that complaint last night and I made sure that it was very clear I am not interested in like financial compensation. I'm not trying to sue anybody. I'm not trying to have them go in and fix anything in Parker's mouth because they will never ever get into my son's mouth again. 
Um, but I do want to bring awareness because I feel that the same thing that has happened to me has probably happened to a lot of other families that went there and had the same thing done. So um, I actually received a call this morning, which I was really surprised at the quick response from this department asking me questions, getting all the information for the dentist. They're gonna pull all of Parker's dental records. They have a staff of dentists on hand that review the records, review the x-rays to determine if unnecessary treatment was given, if ethics were broken, if laws were broken. Um, and you know, I told her, I said, my fear is that the dentist will easily in her dentist talk justify why she felt it was necessary to do crowns on Parker versus a filling. But my frustration and complaint mainly is that no other option of treatment was even considered. And now because of that more invasive procedure that was chosen and more costly to my family was done on him, we now have this residual effect of additional dental treatments that he's having to go through because it was the wrong decision. Um, thankfully we have insurance. If we didn't, I can't imagine families that don't that are going through these things. And you guys, there are cases upon cases across our country of dentist office, doctor's offices. Um, it's, it's in the news of them doing treatments that are not necessary, um, just to make more money. And I truly believe that this is what this pediatric dentist office is doing to these children and to these families. So I want to bring awareness to it. I want them to investigate it. I want them to check it out. Um, so maybe it would prevent them from doing this to other people in the future. I'm just a mom and I'm just listening to my gut. And um, I am going based off of seeing this large cavity getting filled with a filling and doing just fine um, compared to her, this other dentist throwing five crowns in my son's head that I really feel were unnecessary. Uh, and that's kind of, I'm the one sitting next to him in that in that chair, watching him have to get teeth extracted at his checkup appointments due to severe infections because of these poor quality crowns, and it's just heartbreaking to me. So I just wanted to share with you guys, I know it's kind of like a sad, um, gloomy video, but I just wanted to encourage you guys out there that we are our children's voice in every aspect, in school, in the culture, with their friends, with our family, with doctors, everything that they encounter. And we really have to be their advocate. And I know it's easier sometimes to go with the flow, just do what people are telling you to do, but that is not what God has called us to do. That's the easy route. It is hard to be an involved parent. It is harder to be involved, but that's what we're called to do. These children were given to us and entrusted in our care. So um, I just want to encourage you that if you ever get that feeling in your tummy and you're not sure about something, um, do that gut check and get a second opinion. And yes, you might have to take yet another day off work or more time off work to go to another appointment and get a second opinion. But you guys, if I could go back and do that, I totally would so that I didn't have to put Parker through all of this residual pain and suffering that he's going through and he may continue to go through as there are still three more crowns of those crowns left in his mouth. Um, so the chance of them cracking and getting infected are, I mean, I'm looking at the stats from the, the last two and I'm like, it's there's a very high chance that that's gonna happen to him. So just hoping I could maybe um, bring some awareness to that and just give you a gentle reminder that we have a right as their parents to be involved, um, ask questions, push back if something doesn't feel right. More and more our society is trying to take our authority as parents away from our children and having the say so over our children. Um, and I just, in that case, tell you stand firm mamas and daddies because those are your babies. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll give you an update on little Parker. Give me a thumbs up. And also if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I would love for you to stick around and I enjoy sharing our journey with you guys. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.